is fuel for your body, your mind, and definitely your sport. But let's face it, nutrition is confusing and the expectations on girls and women to be thin and have a six pack are exhausting. If you've ever been frustrated with your body, confused about nutrition, obsessed with eating healthy or guilty when you don't, under ate, over ate, or overtrained, and overwhelmed with all the pressure, then this podcast is for you. Nutrition can be easy, you can take control of it, but it might start with letting go of control by asking for help and making a change. I'm Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, sports dietitian and owner of Rise Up Nutrition, where I empower female athletes to overcome nutrition concerns and perform at their highest level, to stop being confused by all the mixed or harmful messages, and finally have confidence in your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. Hey fans, welcome to another episode of the Female Athlete Nutrition Podcast. Today I have another guest with me, Sydney. She's actually an active client at Rise Up Nutrition. We're still working together. We've been working together for about three months now, 12 weeks, and she's seen some amazing progress. And the reason we're going to chat today is actually just considering the holiday season and a new year right around the corner 2021 coming up. This is always a really popular time for setting goals. And Sydney was the perfect person to talk about goal setting. So Sydney, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. (laughs) So the reason I said you're the perfect person to talk about goal setting is because you are kind of like the epitome of a female athlete who's really put her head down, toughened up, and accomplished so much in your life. So a little background here, Sydney is active duty military as well as just a lifelong athlete. And you just have this very like go-getter, do whatever it takes, get it done sort of attitude. So do you mind sharing a bit about your kind of childhood as an athlete and what led you down the military path and why being such a go-getter has helped you accomplish all the things that you have. Yeah, sure. Well, first off, thank you for asking me to do this. It's like very humbling, especially coming off of like 12 weeks of this program. Definitely thank you for the confidence boost, I guess. Yeah. So quickly about, I guess, my life, how I ended up here. I was born into a very athletic family, the youngest of four. All of my three older siblings played college athletics. Two of them are college coaches. So not playing sports wasn't really an option, especially as being the youngest of the four. So basketball was definitely my choice of sport. I ended up playing in college as well for the University of Scranton women's basketball team, and I'm so lucky to have played for them. And on my recruiting trip, I found out about ROTC and a scholarship through the military because I I wouldn't have been able to afford to go to a Jesuit university if I didn't have assistance. So I ended up getting a being awarded a four-year scholarship through the Army, and I got to play basketball for a, one of the top Division three teams in the country at the, at the time and still is. So it was like a perfect world for an athlete, I guess, because you get to play on a really good team. My ROTC program supported it. And as, you know, I was in the mindset of, okay, just do my minimum service and then I'm out. But what I found was there's such a parallel in military leadership and athletic leadership and just leadership in general. And I could use a lot of the things I learned from playing sports my whole life as a leader in my own way in the military. And it was just very gratifying for a very long time with with just being able to use those leadership skills. And then so now I am been active duty for about eight and a half years now. Through that, I've had for kind of five deployments, been through airborne school. I've been in infantry units, like first female in a couple of the units I've served in, been through ranger school. I've been all over the world, almost every country in Africa, and sorry, every country in like the Middle East and <laughs> Africa. I've been there too. And it's it's been a lot in eight and a half years. And I, I hit a breaking point of just self-identity. The... I think it, I really hit the wall maybe about eight months ago, but the buildup was a few years long. So that's kind of in a nutshell how I ended up here. 
Yeah. And so in summary, Sydney is a badass <laughs> is really the summary of this and, and totally okay. You know, obviously you just said kind of, you did hit a wall, you did hit a breaking point, but you were going and going and going. And it's like from one thing to the next, from being a child athlete to playing at the collegiate level to ROTC to then all these different training schools, military deployments. I mean, you have been active and on the go. And I know you and I talked a lot too, you know, there are a lot of women serving in the military and, you know, that's more normal but I think it's fair to say it's still a male dominated environment. And so I think that's, you know, I've called you before like a trailblazer, you know, it's just, there's so much that you've, you've done and accomplished just in an area that we don't have much female representation. So yeah, absolutely. And so with this topic of like, goal setting too, you know, would you say that all, in all those years, like building up until this point, were you a very goal oriented person of like laying out like, okay, I, you know, I want to do ROTC or here's my next step. Like, what was your mindset like when you were accomplishing all these things? It's, it's funny, Lindsay, because I'm not a big goal person. Yeah. Like as a kid, you know, I wanted to play in the WNBA, you know, because or I wanted to play division one because that's, that's what you do as like a little girl that plays basketball, you know, especially once those things open up. So when I think of like my life and my goals, those were like childhood goals, you know, and, but, and then I quickly realized that reality is reality. And sometimes your goals just aren't meant to be. And I, I think I'm a very kind of a go with the flow type of person. And I, in my first few years of serving, I heard someone state, you know, be careful with your five-year goals in your in your early time of your career because it can really limit you to what you want to accomplish. Because if you stay on that path of that goal and that timeline, you're going to miss opportunities or even try things that you may not have even thought you could do. And that's really how I ended up where I am today with everything that I have done. Again, it has it's not just me accomplishing them. It's because I've been surrounded by a lot of amazing people that have helped me too. But if I followed my goals, quotation marks, when I was in my early 20s, I wouldn't have accomplished what I accomplish now. So I, I do think I'm a, I'm a goal setter. I think I'm just more of a, a positive mindset team player. I think that's probably my biggest thing that I've learned and used from athletics to the Army career is that I, I'll just I'll do what I have to do for the team and kind of put myself last. That's you know, I was encouraged to go to certain special units that I've served in. I've been really pushed to go to ranger school and I can almost manipulate my own mind to say, yes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go do it. And you're going to kill me before, you know, you're either, I'm either going to accomplish it or you're, I'm going to die along the way. Like there's nothing holding me back from accomplishing this. And so I think that's my mindset is I'm just, I'm pretty stubborn it's not necessarily that I set goals. It's more so I'm like, okay, you're telling me I have to do this. I'm going to go get it done. And I set many goals and just positive mindset along the way. And that can get pretty dangerous too. Yeah, that, that all or nothing. And, and I think that's, again, that's why I'm like, you're the perfect person for this. Because I think in some ways, you know, if we're to play devil's advocate, it's like in some ways maybe some of the reasons you are so successful is because you had that attitude of this, it's do or die. Like it's going to be done. And almost, you know, like you said, almost like putting yourself last for the better of, of the team and the mission and the objective. And it's such this like noble thing. That's like, wow, look at that. But then at the same time, if we're going to be honest, does that play into a little bit of, you know, why we're here and why we're working together? Yeah, It's a complete identity crisis all the time. Because I can tell myself, no, this is what you want to. I can manipulate myself to just find, even if there's like a small speck of positivity or purpose in it, I just hold on to that. And it's been very difficult for me to take a step back and be like, you know, is this what you really want? Is this a goal you really want to go for? Because my whole life it's been, no, just do what the coach tells you to do. You know, just get this play done, do your part in this play, do play your role on this team and get it done. And you don't have an option to quit. So I, I think that is one of my strongest qualities, 
but it can get to a point where it's very dangerous. And that's, that's what I hit because I, I had really no sense of self for a while and that manifested itself in some pretty unhealthy ways. Yeah. And just for our listeners too, that manifested itself into, you know, some eating concerns and some, you know, lack of health. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and ultimately, you know, that's why we started working together and, you know, so many people, you know, where their nutrition concerns and issues stem from can, can vary for some people. It's a lack of knowledge around nutrition. Like I've just never learned for some people it's, it's an event or maybe something traumatic that happened in their life. And, And very much for you and what we're hearing too is almost this like accumulation of a few years of like, I've always operated in this one way of being told what to do. And I'm, I'm now kind of having this, like you said, kind of identity crisis and it manifested itself in, in a lack of self care for your health. And so it kind of explained to us kind of where you were at with your, your physical health and nutrition, maybe prior to working together. What did that look like? So there's, there's definitely different phases of my life. When I committed to training to go to a certain selection and when I was training to go to ranger school, I every single second of my day and my thoughts were dedicated to that. I was training. I was doing a lot of CrossFit training. I was also doing PT in the morning, so running long distance in the morning and then CrossFit in the afternoon and sometimes doing weights after that, eating as much as I could, as healthy and clean as I could. I was on a men's program because no woman had done that before. So I didn't really have anything to compare that to. So I, regardless of like my, I I passed the standard. It took, it was really hard and a lot of training to actually pass that standard so quickly. But I think for me, it's mentally, I, it's all I could think about. I, the only, the only movies I would watch were motivational. The only music I would listen to would like literally give me chills because I just knew that my life, like I had to do this I and mean, I felt like it was my purpose and that's all great. Like I'm proud of myself for doing that. I'm impressed with myself, but I lost Sydney in that, especially once I accomplished those things, a serious paranoia happened from attention, from receiving praise for experiencing things that definitely were traumatic in the training as well. And that's when my health just, I had no mental health because I couldn't go out in public. Like I wouldn't go anywhere in uniform. I just did not like the attention because it forced me to talk about things that were really difficult that I went through in the, in that training and in that work environment with all of that, that extra stuff that comes along with going for those types of challenges and when I lost my mental health, I lost my physical health because I, I couldn't eat. Like I, I just had no appetite. I was so stressed. I was so paranoid. You can call it PTSD from certain things, from deployments. I don't like to use that term lightly. I, I know the doctors tell me I do have some forms, but I just, I don't really like to use that so loose. So I think everybody experiences all, all types of those things. And, but I definitely did like And I think it hit me worse because my mental health was just bad. And my physical health, I was not fueling myself. I wasn't even giving myself enough nutrition for my brain to heal. Like if we're looking at my muscle as my brain as like a a pulled muscle, I wasn't resting it because I couldn't psychologically rest. I wasn't feeding it. And I wasn't letting my body heal and letting my mind heal from a lot of those traumatic things that I went through. So that's really, I, I think, the root of where my health went. And I've found through this program, we, we do, you and I do a lot of work on my brain. And that has definitely helped me actually fuel and get the nutrition and let my brain just settle and heal and just let my body follow that. Yeah, it was interesting when we started working together, you know, for, for all that you've accomplished, for how active you are, this and that, like, no, we weren't talking about like, get your iron in or get your supplements. We were just like, okay, today we're going to eat today. We're going to think clearly, yeah. you know, and I would go days without eating. Like I would go, I could go a full day without eating and not even realize it and know that I could do it. That was the other thing. Now that I'm remembering, that was another thing where it's like, I know I can go a couple days walking how many dozens of miles with how much weight on my back without like sleeping an hour a night 
and hallucinating every single night because my, I was so tired and so underfed. Like I would hallucinate every night, not just drone, but hallucinate. And I knew I could do it. Like I knew I could go without eating. So I was like, nope, I'd rather just get this done or nope, I can't eat because of so-and-so. So I already knew that I could do it. And I, that's kind of dangerous as well because I didn't realize how much I wasn't eating. Like I just justified it as no, I just got it. It doesn't matter. Mm. And I think, I don't think you're alone there. There's, you know, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing what the human body can accomplish and what the body can do. And like you just said, like, well, I can go days without eating. And I feel like I remember having this conversation with you, Sydney, where I was like, I know that you can, but just because you can, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, story of your life. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And we really had to break this down and, and figure out, you know, what is it? that you want and why. And I think you're not alone in, in falling into that trap. In some ways, we can even pride ourselves on our ability to do these things that other people would think are so impressive, right? Mm-hmm. And and I've had many, many clients who who are, you know, pride themselves on their ability to eat clean or say no to desserts or keep training harder and harder and harder. And it is a dangerous trap because it doesn't end well, no matter what, like, okay, you can do it now. You can do it today. You can do it tomorrow, but there's going to be a breaking point. There will be a breaking point. It's kind of just a matter of when, and, you know, ultimately you hit that breaking point too. There was a breaking point where this can't be sustained anymore. Something has to change. Yeah. And I, I, man, looking back, it's like we would, we would talk about goals and I'd be so resentful about them. We would talk about things that like, I, I was at the point I couldn't even answer questions about myself because I had lost myself. I had lost who I was because I was, I am Captain Jax. I am that girl that went through ranger school. I am that girl on that bus. Like I am that trailblazer and I am all of these labels, but I wasn't Sydney. And, and that just, I couldn't process, I couldn't process like, this is how I want to eat. This is how I want to be. This is how I want my health. I just, I just, was, I just needed help. And it, and you, that's, that's like, I, th- I think the downside of having a very driven goal mindset, because that, that can happen to anybody. I mean, especially people that are just raised to do what you're told and get it done and don't complain and figure it out, you know, and which is, like I said, it's great, but there's a definitely a dark side to that. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is the interesting thing about our topic today of goal setting is actually how, you know, in, in the, the spirit of the new year coming in up and everything is I've found that for athletes and people like you, people like a lot of our listeners, people like me, we are internally so driven, so, you know, goal oriented, this, you know, all or nothing, do or die type of approach that we have to be careful with setting goals because if there's not the right intention behind it, you know, we could end up hurting ourselves in the long run or going on this path where we end up losing ourselves. And you're right. When, when you and I first started working together, you know, we agreed to work together for this 12 week program, the female athlete system of transformation. And so, yeah, in our first few sessions, there is a little bit of discussion of, you know, what are some things you want to accomplish in our time together? And you were very resentful of goal setting at all at that time. And, you know, I think the good news was I was just like, that's okay. You know, like our end goal is to be happy and healthy. And, you know, we can figure out what that really looks like in the process, but almost like we, we took this very, like very, very loose goal setting. Fair type of, <laughs> Yeah. And I think, I think that is important because again, new years, everybody wants to set like new, I feel like nutrition goals and fitness and health goals are the trend, right? There are other goals to set, but I feel like most people, and I'm kind of rolling my eyes at this, but it's like, most people are like, this is the year I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to join the gym. I'm going to sign up for this nutrition program. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to whatever, like there's so many nutrition goals this time of year. And 
I kind of want to give that warning of like, if you want to set a nutrition goal to, or not a warning, but just a piece of advice, like to think about it differently, think about it differently. And so Sydney, as we've been thinking about goals differently for you, like what's now after working together, what's one way that you're kind of thinking about goals or setting goals for yourself moving forward? I think, I think I said this last week is like this idea of flirting with goal setting and just having fun with it instead of letting it control me. Uh, Because I think it was that lack of any self-control either that kind of, I was, yeah, I think it's, I think it's like always that go-to thing with disordered eating where it's like you're controlling your food. And I, I don't want to just say that because that's always the thing that people say, but I think it definitely had something to do with that where it's like, I want to flirt with goal setting to where it's not controlling my life. And with food where it's not controlling my identity and not, it's, it's just, it's just food. Like it's just there to help me be healthier and enjoy every single day. And I, and I think if there's like a certain goal, it's definitely to just redefine Sydney. And that means saying no, that means saying yes. That means saying, yes, I like that, or I don't like that. And just reclaiming just Sydney's standards, I guess, rather than living under so many different, uh, like others, like obviously I'm still in the military, so I have to, you know, live up to some standard in life. But I, but the individual things about myself, I, I think that's going to help me with, with my eating, with my health, with my mental health is just becoming confident and comfortable with my own identity and saying, I'd like that, or I don't like that. And that was one of our biggest things for a few weeks was me like practicing saying the word no, which is hard too. Cause I'm also like, I don't want to hurt people's feelings and saying no, but it's like, what are you doing city? Like, just, just say no, like, you know, and it's, so I think that it, when it comes to my goal setting for this next year, that, and just definitely like just gratitude, like just being so thankful for being here at this point in my life, rather than if I didn't have this program, if I didn't get out of where I was in my life and physically, and if I wasn't forced to have so many hard conversations and like internal thinking, I'm just really grateful for that because I just feel like I'm entering this new chapter and just learning the tools to not end up so down in that hole again. <laughs> yeah. Flirting with goals. Yeah. You said it, it's a, such a, a fun little phrase. But again, if you have that all or nothing mindset, like goal setting, it could be amazing or it could be your demise. And so taking this approach of kind of flirting with it, having fun with it, seeing how it feels. Yeah. Just because you have, you meet like one good person and you're like, you're not going to be like, I'm going to change my identity and fall in love with them and get married like right away. Like you're going to date it. You're going to like flirt with them, you know? And it's, I think I'm doing that with myself, honestly, like I'm like relearning myself and I don't want to like commit to something huge and lose myself again. Absolutely. And you know, the stats with new year's resolutions anyways are, are awful. I mean, they say that I think with psychology today has these estimates that like 45 to 50% of Americans make new year's resolutions. And by the second week of January, 25% of people have completely abandoned their goals. So, and you know, why is that? It's, you know, just like giving the dating or relationship advice. It's like, you need to get to know these goals. You need to, you know, date, flirt, you know, you're not just going to put a ring on it, say you're going to do it. It's probably going to fail. It's not going to work out. And that's okay too. And that's okay too. Like, that's another thing. It's like, just because you're setting a goal doesn't mean that the goal is right for you. You know, maybe you should stop it. Maybe you should quit that goal and not accomplish it. And I think that's like another aspect to goal setting too, is like this concept that you have to achieve it and you'll do anything you can to achieve it. And sometimes it's okay to not achieve a goal. You know, sometimes it's okay to just say, I'm better, I'm I'm okay not doing this. And I don't understand that concept. I'd like to, I think I'm getting there. But I think that's another thing too, where it's like, it's it's okay to stop doing it. No one's going to shame you for it. Yeah. And, and going back again to like eating issues that people have, you kind of mentioned earlier that, you know, control is like yeah. where uh, this stems from for a lot of people. And I feel like I, I agree with you that just saying this need to control food almost like doesn't exp- 
explain it fully, but it's kind of the simplest explanation. If you're looking for some sort of control in your life, like food becomes an easy thing to control. Food becomes an easy thing to make a goal over or set rules or set boundaries. Your body becomes something that you can create goals with and kind of manipulate and say, well, I'm going to change this or achieve that and do this physically. So it does become like this very, I almost want to say it's pressing the easy button Yeah, to, to create these like hard and fast goals when it comes to your nutrition and your body. And I think the harder button is to flirt with goals, is to have fun with food, is to put your health, including mental health, as a priority. Probably the harder button is probably what you and I have been working on over the past four months, three months. Yeah, it's just, and it's not, there was a portion of me wanting to control food, but a lot of it was I could not physically swallow my food. I couldn't put it in my mouth. I couldn't. And I tried, like I was living with my, my best friend at the time. And she's like, do you want me to make you dinner? She's like, I'm going to make you dinner. And she would just sit there with me and I'd just be crying because I, I couldn't eat. I was so stressed. Like stress is an understatement. I was just so lost. And so just lost. I, I couldn't eat. And that was really scary. Like, and th- there's that portion to it, but there also is the body image thing. Like I've always just seen something different in me or just wanted to lose weight to feel, I don't know if it's self-worth or not, which is crazy to think about because like I have accomplished things. So it's like sitting, you know, I, I can come, I can, I feel like I sound like this really ungrateful, you know, egotistical person saying that, but I think the body image thing, that's always been an underlying issue that I can suppress and it can hide away. It can pop up here and there. I think it just like came out guns blazing when I was going through some difficult things with work. And then it was like, Oh yeah, she doesn't want to eat. She can't eat. Let's just starve her, you know? And it just, it was like too amazing. Mm, This is such an interesting thing that you bring up that just body image concerns were just underlying, you know? And, and I think that they are for many, many people. Whether it's, you know, insecurities about their body or even in your case, almost you then started getting attention that you almost didn't, you didn't want at some point. And then it's like, I don't want my body to be seen. Some like, I, I think that many people and especially females struggle on some level with body image. And if you've never learned how to embrace and respect and take care and love and be proud of your body, then when you find yourself in a situation like you were that was stressful, traumatic, it's like that arose. Yeah. And the other thing too is that like it wasn't a body image thing of what I was receiving from my workplace was that I was too small, that I didn't look the part, that I didn't, I wasn't this cut female that just crushes the CrossFit class that no one can even get close to. Like, cause I'm tall, I'm very, th- very lean, very like wiry. People don't think that I can move the weight that I can move. So it was almost like this looking at me being like, she didn't really do that. She didn't really accomplish what she did. Add to that, at least what I felt people just, I felt like I never left ranger school, which is the case for a lot of people. But I, you know, I, I never passed the selections that I did because, oh, something was easy for her because they would look at my body and judge it. They would look at my leanness and be like, she doesn't look like that huge ranger. That's because I don't, and that's okay. My job doesn't require me to yeah. do what those guys, all of those guys do. So I think that, that probably sparked a lot of underlying things that I had because I'm not necessarily being criticized for being too skinny. I'm being criticized for being, wait, I'm not being criticized for being not skinny enough being criticized for not looking more bulky, more muscular, that that definitely brought up those suppressed things. Yeah. And I mean, this just proves another, another huge point here, which is that like, there is no ideal image. Yeah. There, There is no, you know, perfect look because whatever situation or environment you're in, you know, there might be, and there, there shouldn't be, but there might be different 
perceived standards of what quote unquote right or ideal looks like. And so what you're expressing is, you know, typically, maybe typically, lots of women might feel this pressure to be thinner or smaller. And you were actually like feeling almost the opposite of I'm being judged for not being bigger, for not being buffer, for not being stronger. And, and I think, you know, different sports yeah. are going to experience this too, different environments. And, and I think this all boils down to, again, just living in a world where we do quickly judge bodies when maybe we shouldn't, what we should be looking at is, is she accomplishing the job? Is she doing her job? Is she performing? Yeah. And I think back to my teammates too that I played with in college and some of like the the power forwards, the centers, the, the stronger girls that have a role of really like doing some work down there. And simple comments, simple roles, like you're the big man or you're, you know, just things like that where it's, you can't really escape that because that's the sport. And That's okay. Like, I mean, I think, but I think it's more of like having a conversation of how how do you have that conversation of being proud of that? How, how do you maintain your mental health in those labels? Because you're blessed with that, those things in your body, you know, you're blessed Mm -hmm. that I would look at other girls with my height, with more muscle on them and be like, God, that's awesome. You know, I wish, I wish I was that strong. Like I wish I could just squat 135 without, worrying about it but different labels just create different mindsets and different goal setting you know bring it back to what we're talking about but like there's so many labels that you pick up in athletics again it's like an identity thing it's like who who are you outside of this sport who are you outside of these goals who are you like what what are you trying to accomplish in your life that these goals should help you accomplish yeah I think it's like it's all connected Yeah. And I, you know, I think having the conversation about bodies and body image is important. Are we ever going to agree on everything? No. Are we ever going to all like screen ourselves and say the, you know, the perfect thing or not say like never bring attention to bodies. That's, that's hard because just like you said, like going, going back to basketball, it's like, no, you're actually giving a compliment, but you never know how that compliment is perceived. And so at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, you have to build your own confidence in yourself. You have to work on your own body image. Yeah. And do something about it. Do something about it. You can't just, you can't just sit in it, you know, like, yeah, I, I have things in my mind, like, cause I was always super tiny. So I was the point guard. I was a good point guard. But I was always tiny, so I wasn't going to be a center, and I would be picked on for being tiny. And it's like, yeah, you know, that that is, yeah, like maybe that's where some of it started. But, like, I want to do something about it, you know, and talking about it is really hard. It's not fun. It's not easy. It's uncomfortable. But I don't want to fe- I don't want to feel like I felt six, six months ago ever again. I, I really don't. So it's like, okay, what am I doing about it? And maybe that's my version of goals where it's like, what am I doing about it? I'm not setting a goal that's like like a smart goal of how will I never get back to that. It's more of like, what am I doing to just create a more positive lifestyle to avoid getting back to that state rather than saying, I'm going to set a goal. And when I'm, well, when I'm 70, if I'm lucky to live that long, I'm going to be like, my goal is accomplished. I think it's more so of just like your perspective of what goals are and how to get out of it. Like, what are you doing to get over that? At least that's how I talk to myself. It's like, okay, Sydney, what what are you doing to get over this and get through this? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you said, like the smart goal, like kind of the traditional way of goal setting is, you know, can you, you know, set a goal that's specific, that's measurable, achievable, realistic, time sensitive. And those that's like, so puts you in a box. It's so black or white versus what I'm hearing from you is, you know, really soul searching. Yeah. Who do I want to be? How do I want to feel? And if you can, if you can answer those questions, which I realize are the loaded questions and hence, you know, why you've done a lot of mental work over the past year. And you and I have done a lot of mental work together, but the loaded questions of, do you know who you want to be as a person? And do you know how you want to feel every day? And then we're going to chase the activities and we're going to do the things that will help you become that person. 
that will help you feel that feeling. And if you can feel it today, you're going to end up feeling it tomorrow. And so just kind of chasing the feeling as as hippie as that might sound. Well, it is. I, I mean, it, yeah, I think I'm kind of hippie at heart, which is probably explains a lot. But I think going back to that other question where you asked me, you know, what goals, if any, for this next year, I think it's when we honestly, my life was shook when we did that vis- visualization exercise and I'm like sitting in a car in my hometown outside my, I was visiting home and we did the visualization of like, where do you see yourself in five years and 10 years? And I just fell apart over that. And I think ever since I felt that exercise, it's been like, yep, I'm going to do what I'm going to do my things every day to help me get to that feeling of how I want to feel in five years of how I want to feel in 10 years. It's not necessarily, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is what my job is going to be. This is what I'm going to be earning. This is what I'm going to look like. It's more so of, I want that feeling of of what I was looking at that Sydney in five years, that Sydney in 10 years, I want that feeling. And that's kind of more so what I'm chasing I think rather than like hard set goals of where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm with, you know, all of those other things. Yeah. And what Sydney's referring to is, you know, I think a a groundbreaking exercise that I do with my clients is, is we, we do map out goals, but we map them out in a very different way. And it is kind of a, I guess I say groundbreaking or transformational exercise that we do together. And it really sets the stage for the things that we accomplish. And, you know, you have set so many goals in your life. You've had that go-getter attitude. You've accomplished a lot. I might argue that your biggest obstacles were in this past year and that the way for you to accomplish those were in a totally different way. Yes. It's, it's I, the way I had you. Oh my gosh. That's it. That's it. I couldn't, I could not, I could not get to where I needed to be based off of what my life experiences were. And I had to do something different. You had to do something different. And I think that's good advice for anybody that's feeling like they're just like, I don't know, running into a brick wall or like, I'm not getting anywhere with, with my health, with my mental health, with my physical health. I'm just like doing the same thing over and over and over again and it's not working. Well, there's, there is a different way. There's gotta be a different way. And maybe you just haven't found it. You haven't had somebody show you the way. And, you know, I think that's a big thing of what we did together is we showed you kind of a different way to approach goals and health. Cindy, I do have one more question for you because you've mentioned that your major eating issues really stemmed from stress and like physically not being able to eat. And that's a very traumatic time and and dangerous time for one's health. If anybody listening to this is experiencing that right now, you know, what would your like advice be on what, what are the next steps if you are physically and mentally just in a place where you are struggling to take care of your personal health due to mental stress? Do you have any like action steps or advice for them? You just gotta, you have to let, you have to let go and let someone else help, help you. That, that's how I ended up here was I, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it on my own. And I knew that I was scared. And so that's when I reached out to another woman that I trusted at work and was like, I just texted her and was like, I I need help. And then at that point it was It was, I was really scared because it's also showing like so much vulnerability. It's showing serious weakness. I, what I thought was weakness, but now I think it was really strong for me to actually step up and say like this, I really want to use so many expletives right now, but I'm not going to, but just the act of asking for help was just really shitty Yeah, because you just, you're letting go. Like you're saying, I can't do it. And maybe that's, maybe that's the root, one of the root things that at least maybe with athletes is like to say you can't do it is you're on the bench. So to come out and say, I can't do this, I need help is really hard. But then just like letting go and trusting, trusting the process. If you trust that person, you know, like for me, it takes a bit to be, to build trust, but 
once I trust someone, I'm like, I, I trust you a hundred percent. I trusted the woman that I went to who was our, our psych. And I trusted my me- the medical team that helped me get my last unit. And I, I think that's the biggest thing is just admitting you can't do it. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. And the interesting about that, the interesting thing about that is, you know, you're saying admitting you can't do it, but that's actually the way that you did do it. Yeah. You did recover your health. You did find your strength. You did find your identity. You did start eating. You did start fueling. You're back to training. Like you, you found yourself and your health again. And the way to do that was by saying, I need help. And so you did do it. Yeah. You did. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's like, it's like in the end, long-term, long-term goal, I guess, is you did yeah. it instead of wanting like short-term results or try, thinking you can figure it out. But yeah, I think we just, I think I just had another enlightened thing where it's like, <laughs> I ended up doing it because I admitted I couldn't. Yeah. And I think yeah. like, with athletes, like I said, like a lot of athletes, it's really difficult to say you can't do it. You can't do it on your own. Yeah. Another enlightened moment happening live on our call. And I think that is a great way to wrap up this conversation, thinking about those long-term goals too, like you just mentioned. Sydney, I do have a few rapid fire questions if you're ready to play the game. First question is, if you could eat one food every single day for the rest of your life and never get sick of it, what would it be? Um... Ice cream with chocolate, strawberries, and caramel and cookie dough. Mm, a full Sunday, Love it. What is your favorite spectator sport? You know, okay, I think surfing is up up there now because I've been watching wow. I've been watching the like World Surf League pipeline thing because my boyfriend watches it, and I'm about it. So I think to that it's not basketball anymore because the sport has really changed so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna start watching surfing I love that what about for you what's your favorite sport or physical activity to participate in basketball and yoga yeah two very different things and both amazing yeah. in their <laughs> entity. and Sydney if you have a female athlete, whether in your life or a famous one that you really look up to and think is a role model or is inspiring, who would that be and why? Oh my gosh. You're going to think I'm crazy. But right now, the last per- the last woman that I watched do some sort of a sporting event that had me bawling on the couch, literally bawling, wondering like, what am, what am I going to accomplish in my life? I was watching the Netflix series of like crazy sports around the world. And the first episode is of this girl in England who won like that downhill running contest three years in a row. And she just like annihilated her body last year. Just like her shoulder was totally popped out. And oh. she was just like, no, I'm going to do it again this year. And she like just was tr- downhill sprint training on like a 45 degree downhill thing, which is it's, like literally the most dangerous thing in like random sports. And you're going to think I'm insane, but I just, and she, she won it in the end, sorry for the spoiler, but I, I was so moved by like this girl that just didn't care and just went and did this insane weird sport and just had so much fun and a smile on her face as she's rolling down a hill. I don't even know her name, but she needs a shout out. That is amazing. Shout out to the girl with the downhill <laughs> running. That is just inspirational. It's getting bald, running, running down wow. the hill with a smile on her face and she won it. I will look her <laughs> up and I will include her name in the show notes of this episode. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining and sharing your story. It's so meaningful to hear it and just sharing to kind of your view on goal setting. I think I think this might be eye-opening for a lot of people and just maybe get us thinking a little differently about goal setting and New Year's resolutions and, you know, really just what it means to take care of yourself and put your health first. So thank you for joining, Sydney. Thanks, Lindsay. I really hope you enjoyed that episode and thanks for listening. But before I let you go, I have free resources that you can have access to right away, right now, so that you can start fueling your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. First, I have your Red S recovery race. If you've ever wondered if you might be struggling with Red S, curious to learn more, or know you have Red S and are looking to recover fast, then you can head to www.riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S 
and download the Red S Recovery Race. See how you place and figure out the next steps to recovery. Plus, while there, I have a few other great resources for you, including three nutrition secrets that every elite athlete swears by and access to our private Facebook community, Female Athlete Nutrition. So again, to gain access to all of this, head to riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S that's backslash R E D S and you can gain access and get the help you need fast. Too many girls and women and female athletes struggle with nutrition, but you don't have to any longer become fierce, fit and fueled links in the show notes, and I'll see you next time.